Hi, welcome to Learn Finance. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at how to calculate the internal rate of return uh, for a project uh, using Excel. Uh, we have a couple different projects to take a look at and then we'll compare them and see which one is the better option. Um, so let's start. Project A has an initial cost of $80,000 but is expected to generate positive net cash flow of $12,000 each year for the next 10 years. What is the internal rate of return of the project? So let's take a look. This is how I like to uh, set up these problems uh, with kind of the initial investment and then each subsequent year. Um, so feel free to pause if you'd like to set something like this up um, or uh, feel free to just do it as we go along here. Um, but you will need to enter the initial investment first. So let's start with that. We're told that the project um, has a cost of $80,000. So we'll enter in negative 80000 And make sure that is negative. That's how Excel knows that um, this is the initial investment. This is a cash outflow. Um, so you'll definitely need that negative sign. Uh, next, we're told that uh, each year the project generates $12,000. So let's enter that. And we can go ahead and drag that in for the next 10 years underline that. What I like to do is to just uh, sum up the cash flows without any regard for uh, the time value of money just to kind of get a, a framework for, for how much cash um, the project is generating. So let's just sum up using the sum function. Let's just sum up these cash flows. Okay, so that tells us that over the life of the project um, it generates uh, $40,000 in net cash flow. That doesn't take into account any sort of time value of money. So we'll use the IRR function to tell us the rate of return that the project is generating each year. So we'll just use equals IRR and then we'll grab in all these cash flows starting with the initial investment. Um, you don't have to use this uh, guess input um, right here. Um, most of the time, um, Excel will be able to guess um, with accuracy the, the uh, rate of return of the project. Um, it's only for kind of unusual cash flows where Excel tries to guess, but it's not able to. Um, but for most projects uh, we'll be looking at, um, you won't need that. So let's just close the parenthetical. And this tells us that the internal rate of return for this project is 8.1%. And that's that's the uh, rate at which the uh, the NPV will equal zero. That's kind of the definition of uh, internal rate of return. Um, but you need to compare that to your cost of capital. Um, so if you have a cost of capital of 5%, you know that your IRR is 3.1% higher than that. So the project might be a good idea. Um, however, if your uh, cost of capital is 15%, then this IRR is too low. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, generate enough return based on the cost of capital. Okay, so now let's take a look at another project. Project B has an initial cost of $30,000. The project will not produce positive net cash flow for the first three years, but will generate $25,000 for years four and five and $20,000 in year six. So let's take a look using the same setup. We're told that the cost is negative $30,000. We're also told that it does not produce any cash for the first three years. So what we need to do is to enter zero for three years. And that's necessary so that when Excel calculates the rate of return, it knows that uh, the cash flow in Year four is not the first cash flow, it's the fourth because we have these zeros in here. For year four, we generate 25,000. For year five, we generate 25,000. And then we were told that uh, in year six, we generate 20,000. And for seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, uh, we don't necessarily need to enter anything, um, but to be consistent, uh, we can enter some zeros in there. Um, Excel would know, um, you know, either way. It, it doesn't uh, add any value to leave the zeros in, take the zeros out. We'll just do it for consistency. 
Um, let's calculate the net cash flow again using the sum function. We'll sum those in. And this project also generates $40,000 in net cash flow over the life of the project. But let's see if the IRR is different. So we use equals IRR. Grab these cash flows. Again, we can grab these zeros in here. Uh, it won't make a difference. Now this project generates 19% internal rate of return. Uh, so why is this higher? It generates the same net cash flow of $40,000, uh, but a couple things. Um, the initial investment is less, so these cash flows um, that are coming in are more uh, when compared to the initial investment, negative $30,000. So now, let's uh, compare the two projects of Project A Project B. They both, over the life of the project, um, generate $40,000. However, Project B um, generates 19% uh, internal rate of return, while Project A only generates 8.1%. So by the IRR metric, we would say that Project B is a better investment. Um, now, of course, there is uh, a lot of different factors that go into whether or not a company should invest in projects. Um, so it's worthwhile looking at other metrics like net present value or payback period. Um, so investigate those methods further. Um, but that's it for today. Um, we would say that Project B is likely the better project um, using the IRR method.